Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ya ayyuhal muslimun. To the long-time listener and first-time visitor, we welcome you to this episode. Now without further ado, let's get into it. Inna alhamdulillah, nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'afiruhu wa na'udhu billahi min shuroori anfusina wa min sayyiyati a'malina man yahdihi allahu fala mudillala وَمَنْ يُضْلِلْ فَلَا هَادِيَ لَهُ أَشْهَدُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَحْدَهُ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهُ وَأَشْهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا عَبْدُهُ وَرَسُولُهُ صلى الله وسلامه عليه أما بعد يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار ثم أما بعد Ya marhaban bikum. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless each and every one of you for coming out this morning to learn and to benefit bithnillahi ta'ala. We ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he makes this sitting one of benefit and blessing and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward each and every one of you Tremendously. Ala kulli hal, I request from all of the participants who are in today's class and and all those who may listen to it in the future, bithnillahi ta'ala, I request that everyone, they have with them a pen and paper, some manner of taking notes, bithnillahi ta'ala, whether that is traditionally or digitally, um, Insha'Allah. Unlike the last class, Insha'Allah Ta'ala, I want to ask the questions as we go along so that you could associate them with those sections inside of your notes. Bithnillahi Ta'ala. So Insha'Allah Ta'ala, as we come to the questions, just jot them down in those sections and then you can always organize your notes better later which is the advice that many of the mashaykh they give that when you attend classes you have a notebook or a section of your notebook that is reserved for taking notes during the class and then you have another section or another notebook that is reserved for organizing your notes more neatly and in a more organized fashion after the class. Naam. And the other sections as well, Bithilahi Ta'ala, perhaps in the future we can speak about that. But these are two of the sections or two of the notebooks that the ulama they advise that we have. One for taking notes during the class and one for organizing those class notes in a more neat and organized manner after the class. Naam. So inshallah ta'ala, without further delay, we want to get into the topic of today's class. And if you saw the flyer, the topic of it, or of, 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 of today's class, it is let's not be trifling and trivial. Let's not be trifling and trivial. Now, when speaking to an African-American audience, I believe everyone fully understands 
what is intended by that title. But it must be stated that not everyone may necessarily understand this vernacular. Because if you were to look up the word trifling inside of the Webster's Dictionary, then they bring as a definition that trifling means having little meaning or seriousness or of little value, right? So someone who was not familiar with the usage of it in the African-American vernacular, they may not necessarily understand the intended meaning by the title. If you look at the synonyms that they bring for it, then they are negligible, that something is negligible, right? Um, again, you won't necessarily understand. Whereas in the African-American vernacular, trifling, it refers to suspicious character, that an individual, they act in a suspicious manner, someone who is deceitful, someone who is shady, not 100% above board, someone who is suspect. They act very suspiciously and in a very negative and deceitful and cunning and petty manner, right? Culturally, being trifling from a characteristic standpoint, meaning from one's character, right? This character trait is undoubtedly one of the worst character traits a person can have. One of the worst character traits a person can have is by being trifling. And when we look at trivial, what is meant by it in the title of course, is acting in a petty manner. That individual, they act in a petty manner. So when we bring these things together as understood, it would jump out at the listener that these words point to very distinct and descript characteristics. In order to be trifling, in order to act in a trivial manner or to be trivial, then an individual, they must what? They must act out. They must do certain things that are trifling, things that are trivial, things that are petty. An example of some of these things, they can be seen in the hadith that we began with in the last class that we promised that, bithnilahi ta'ala, if given the opportunity, we will continue with that same hadith. But I wanted to highlight these concepts because I want it to be extremely clear to the listener how vile and despicable these characteristics are and why these characteristics are just not acceptable in any which way, shape, or form. So let us recap. That hadith is the hadith of Abu Huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu fima rawahu muslim fi sahihi it is from the hadith of Abu Huraira, narrated on the authority of Abu Huraira. And it has been collected by Imam Muslim in his Sahih, where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, لا تحاسدوا Do not have malicious envy. Do not have malicious envy and jealousy for one another. وَلَا تَنَاجَشُوا And do not inflate, artificially inflate the prices over one another. وَلَا تَبَاغَضُوا And do not have hatred for one another. Do not hate one another. وَلَا تَدَابَرُوا And do not turn away from one another. Do not turn your backs on one another. وَلَا يَبِعْ بَعْضُكُمْ عَلَى بَيْءِ بَعْضُ And do not undercut one another in trade and in business. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he goes on to say وَكُونُوا عِبَادُ اللَّهِ إِخْوَانًا And be you, one, be you brothers one to another. 
O servants of Allah, be you all brothers one to another. So meaning to establish brotherhood and to establish sisterhood. Bidnillahi ta'ala, this is the portion of the hadith that I want to cover or I tend to cover in today's class. And bidnillahi ta'ala, if given another opportunity, we will continue with the rest of the hadith or the next section and portion of the hadith bidnillahi ta'ala. Ala kulli hal, in any event, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, after prohibiting us from malicious envy and jealousy, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, وَلَا تَنَاجَشُوا وَلَا تَنَاجَشُوا When Najj, what is meant by this, and Najj in the language of the Arab, it means istithara, istithara shay. It means to agitate something, istishara to shay, or istithara, afwan, istithara to shay. It means to agitate something, Naam. to excite something. In this sense, when it comes to a najj fil bayir, when it comes to a niche inside of business, inside of transactions, then it means ziyada fi thamin sil'ah. It means to artificially inflate the price of a commodity. That, are, that you artificially inflate the price of an item. This is a niche. Naam. And going back to Trifling, it enters into the meaning that what that one is deceitful. They act in a deceitful manner, right? So let us let us look, and you tell me whether or not this characteristic or this in artificial inflating of the price is deceitful or not. Sheikh Fozan, Hadallahu Taala, he mentions. He says, "What Jeshu that this is the artificial inflating or exaggeration of yani, a price. Well, who, yani, and, and what this means is, It's that an individual, be it man or woman, they artificially inflate a price of something. Now, but they do not intend to actually buy it. So in this scenario, and I want you to understand this, in this scenario, this is a third party. This is not the buyer, nor is it the seller. This is a third party that enters into their business transaction, enters into, inserts themselves into their negotiation, and then they raise the price. They raise the price. But they themselves never intended on buying it. They just wanted to raise the price so that the purchaser pray, pays more. Naam. So they raise the price, but they themselves, they don't, they don't intend on buying it. What I can, but they want others to hear what they are saying. And then they try to outbid them. Now, then they try to outbid them. Hada muharramun. And this is haram. This is haram. Now, and what it is, the, what is, what's the proof that this is haram? Is this hadith right here. Bilalatil hadith al hadith. This hadith shows us that this action of artificially inflating a price of an item so that the one who is purchasing it pays more. This is haram. Naam. So a person can't say, well, I want to do a favor for the seller of an item so they can get more money. So I'm going to raise the price, even though me, myself, I don't intend to buy it. But what do they do? They present themselves as if they are a prospective purchaser of the item, as if they're, they're going to buy it themselves. Naam. But they never intend on buying it. It's all a game. It's all a scheme. Naam. 
People utilize this as a con to con people out of their money and to get them to pay more than they had intended on paying or even more than the item is worth. The Shaykh he mentions, he says, But if they are trying to raise the price because they're not, they, they, they're bidding for it because they actually intend on potentially purchasing it, there's no problem with this. Now, there's no problem with this. So if a person was selling an item, for example, a car, and a person is saying, I want $10,000 for the car, and it was a car that you really liked. And you say, well, listen, I know your, the, 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 the price, it says that it's 10,000. I will give you 12,000 and I will buy the car. Now the person who was standing there, who was another potential purchaser of the car, perhaps they heard that. And they say, well, no, I, I'll give you 1250. And this one said, no, I'll give you, I'll give you 3,000, I mean 13,000, right? Then this is fine, why? Because they intend on buying it. If he settles at, okay, 13,000, then he's gonna pay 13,000. Now, this is perfectly fine because he intends on buying that, that item. So this is not what is being spoken about, okay? And they bring, some of the anima, you may find it, they mention a, an incident that has been attributed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but we will not link it to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because the hadith is not authentic. But they bring it, and the point that they bring from it is to show an example of an exception. And this was an incident where an individual was supposed to have went to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they were begging, they were asking for something, but they were an individual who had the ability to earn money, but they were just asking. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as it is said in this incident, but again, this hadith is not authentic, asked the person, do you have anything that you can sell? And a man mentioned, yes, I have two items that they can sell. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam it is said that he said, bring these items so we can sell them for you. So this way you can get some money from your own capability then as opposed to asking unnecessarily. So long story short, one person offered to give a dinar for the items. And it was said, does anyone, would anyone give two dinar? Or will anyone give more than a dinar? And another said, I'll give two dinar. And then the, the one who said that they would give two dinar, they, they purchased the item. In any event, this hadith itself is not authentic. But the takeaway from this hadith is, and this is what the early man they point out, is that if, if you're selling something for a person, you don't intend to buy it, no. But you're selling it for someone else. So you try to get the best price for those items for someone else, then there's no problem with this. This is fine. This does not enter into niche. This, is, this does not enter into artificially inflating the price. Because one thing that you'll see and that you'll, it'll become very clear is that niche, it involves deception. It involves trickery. It involves trickery, right? Because in this case of niche, the individual, they don't intend on buying the item. Now, so the Shaykh he mentions, This one who he artificially inflates the price, but they do not intend on buying it. Now, so you see deception. They act as if they are a potential buyer and then they enter into it just to raise the price. So in the example that the Urma they bring from the Hadith that's not authentic. The Prophet, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu as it comes in his Hadith that's not authentic, was not in a position where it was understood that he was going to buy it. Now, it was not understood that he was going to be a purchaser of it, but he was selling it on someone else's behalf. So the two scenarios they they don't match at all. So 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 it's to understand the nuances behind Nedj and why it's so despicable. This person enters into it acting like they are going to purchase it. Never intending on wanting to purchase it, but they act like they want to purchase it just to raise the price up. Now, well, in the mayuridu, rather, the only thing that they want, and yarafa'u qimataha. They want to raise the price of the item. Why? 
لِكَوْنِهِ شَرِيكًا لِلْبَائِعِ Because they are a secret partner of the buyer. See, it's a con. It's a scheme. They are a secret partner of the buyer. So they're trying to get more money. Or because they are the buyer's friend. أو صديق له Or they are the buyer's friend. أو ما أشبه ذلك Or whatever is similar to this. So this is نج وهذا حرام and this is حرام and this is the meaning and this is what is being prohibited in the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam لا تناجشوا do not artificially inflate the prices over one another due to what? the deception the trickery the deceit that is all contained therein because once this is exposed, then this will what? This will just destroy brotherhood. You go to the masjid and they have a bazaar, for example. They have a marketplace, they have a bazaar. People, vendors outside of the masjid selling. And then the sister's friend of the one who was selling the, the, the item, she, she, she goes into a fake bidding with the people that are there just to get the price raised up. Once it becomes known, this is her friend. She didn't intend on buying it. This is what they do to raise the prices on people. Then that's going to cause enmity amongst the, the believers. That's going to cause hatred amongst the believers. That's going to lead to strife amongst the believers. And this is not permissible. We are to avoid everything that will lead to hatred and enmity and enmity and strife amongst ourselves and amongst our ranks. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam after mentioning La Tanajashu, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said, Wa la and don't foster hatred for one another. Don't hate one another. And what's understood by that is what? And don't do things that would lead to hating one another and don't act upon that hate. Does that make sense? Before going on, question number one is I want you to write down what is nej? What is nej? Now, number two, the second question is can you offer an example, or can you offer, excuse me, a higher price for something if you, in fact, intend on purchasing it? Can you offer a higher price for something if you, in fact, intend on purchasing it? Those are the first two questions, right? Not, not, not too hard, right? But, so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam goes on and he says, وَلَا تَبَاغَضُوا and don't hate one another. al bold fil qalb Hatred is inside of the heart. Naam. Wa huwa karahiyya. And it is hatred. Right? Hatred is well known. Hatred is in the heart. And it is to have a dislike or disdain for something. Wal matlub, as relates to the believers, what is required and what is sought after as relates to the believers al aqs is the opposite of that. Wahua al muhabba and it is al muhabba. It is that we have love between each other. Al muhabba bain al muslimin is that there is love between the Muslims. Not that there's bulk bainahum, not that there is hatred amongst them, but that there is love amongst them. This is what it should be. That there's love between the Muslims. Naam. For yahibbu ba'duhum ba'da. So they love one another. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, La yu minu. أَحَدُكُمْ حَتَّى يُحِبَّ لِأَخِيهِ مَا يُحِبُّ لِنَفْسِهِ As it comes in hadith as mutafiqun alayhi. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, None of you truly believes until he loves for his brother what he loves for himself. Meaning that none of us, no Muslim truly believes until they love for their Muslim brother or sister what they love for themselves. مِنَ الْخَيْرِ From the good. Naam, from the good. So this is what is... Required. This is what is sought after. This is our objective, is to foster love between the Muslims, right? 
فالمطلوب هو التحاب بين المسلمين is that there is love between the Muslims not that there is hatred between the Muslims وأما أن يتباغضوا فهذا منهي عنه but to foster hatred amongst the Muslims this is not permissible this is impermissible نعم لكن هل يملك الإنسان أن يزيل ما في قلبه من البغض Here's the question But does a person have the ability to remove hatred from their heart? Because it's important that we understand what is being prohibited here. And I'll give you a hint. I'll give you a hint. You remember the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ when the man came to him and he asked the Prophet ﷺ to give him advice. And the Prophet ﷺ, he told him, لا تغضب. Don't become angry. This is how it's translated, right? Don't become angry. Does it mean never get mad? Does it mean never get mad? Of course, we know the answer is no. Because you and I know that there are times that things will happen and you get mad and it's beyond your control. You feel anger. You, you, you're mad by this thing. Right? You're mad by this thing. You're angry by this thing. So are we commanded to never feel anger? No. But rather we're commanded to what? To control ourselves when we become angry. So when we become angry, we have to control our tongue and what we say. We have to control our hands and how we utilize and what we do. We have to control ourselves. This is what is meant. So now going back to, to, to here, where the Prophet ﷺ is telling us, don't hate one another, then what do we understand from that? That it means that we have to control ourselves if we find that we may hate another Muslim. So does a person have the ability to remove hatred from their heart? They do not. But they have the ability to control themselves. The Shaykh, he mentions, he says that هذا سجيتون في بعض الناس that this is like an innate characteristic of some of the people. This is like an innate characteristic of some of the people. Meaning that there are going to be certain things that annoy you as an individual that just, they are your pet peeves and they cause you to have a disdain when you see these things. There are certain people that they just rub you the wrong way. You can't explain it. They just rub you the wrong way. Something that you don't like. Ma'am? Having this feeling with them within itself is you're, is you're not is not held against you. It's not sinful just because you have this feeling. Because sometimes it's like that. Naam. Walakin. However, either abagata. But if you hate someone, either abagata. That one. Naam. Falatamel. If you hate someone, then don't act in accordance to that hate. بِمُوجِبِ الْبُغْضِ فَتَضَرَّ أَخَاك Do not act in accordance to that hatred and thus you hurt or harm your brother or your sister in this case. نعم? Don't act upon that hatred. Don't act upon that hatred. And of course, what are we talking about? We're talking about that natural hatred that a person may have for someone else. We're not speaking about hating for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not at all. We're not talking about that. We're talking about those things that are outside of that, that have no link to loving and hating for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those pet peeves that you just don't like about someone. For example, you just can't stand the sound of their voice. It's like that. This is real. It exists. So just because you can't stand the sound of someone's voice, which is nothing that warrants and necessitates that you shouldn't like them, but sometimes it's like that. You just don't like the sound of someone's voice. When they speak, they annoy you. The way they speak is annoying to you. And, and, and you find that you hate 
this fact and you don't like this person because of this. You are not allowed to act upon that hatred and hurt that person or harm that person or cause harm to that person because you don't like the way they sound. You don't like their voice. You don't like how they talk. They talk too slow. Some people are like that. They talk very slow and it's frustrating for those who can't handle that to listen to them. Hurry up, get to the point. He's, he's, he's talking so slow. What, what, what are you trying to say? So, <laughs> right? This is an example. Anakulli had, you're not allowed to act upon that hatred. You're not allowed to act upon that hatred. فَإِذَا وَجَتَ فِي نَفْسِكَ بُغْضًا فَدَفَعْهُ If you find in yourself hatred for a, for a believer, try to get rid of it. نعم. بِتَذَكِّرِ مَا بَيْنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ مِنَ الْمَحَبَّةِ وَالْخَيْرِ By remembering what is between the Muslims from love and from good. Now, so if you find yourself that this brother, I don't like the way they sound, but or for the brothers, but for the sisters, if you find a sister, you just don't like the way she sounds, something about her is, is annoying to you. Remind yourself of the love that there should be between the Muslims. Remind yourself of this fact. OK. And act in accordance to that love. Not my favorite person in the world, but you know what? I have one sweet potato pie to give away. I'm going to give it to this person. Not my favorite person, but I'm going to give it to this person because I'm supposed to have love for one another. Now, so you offer whatever you can offer. Smile in their face. Speak to them kindly. Give them a hug. Even though not your favorite person, it's okay. As long as you don't act upon anything that will cause harm to them, or you don't speak ill about them, you don't backbite them, you don't slander them, so on and so forth. Now, when they are mentioned, speak good. If you have nothing good to say, don't say anything. Just be quiet. This is important because this is how we foster love. Because what we're not supposed to do is foster hatred. So we have to act in a manner that brings about love. We don't act in manners that brings about hatred amongst ourselves. Now, so by acting upon that hatred that you may have for another Muslim, then this is not permissible because this will break our ranks. It will destroy our solidarity. It will destroy the cohesive nature of our communities. It will bring about nothing good. So we have to foster love amongst one another. So we have to learn how to treat each other good, even when at times that other individual is not your favorite person. You still treat them good because the Muslims are supposed to love one another نعم? and have love for one another and act in a manner that illustrates that, that we have love for one another, not just we're brothers and sisters in speech, not just a brotherhood and a sisterhood that exists purely in speech, but one that could be seen, one that could be seen because we treat each other good. Not, yes, that's my brother. Oh, I love him. But then it's time to pray. I don't want his foot touching my foot. I don't want his shoulder touching my shoulder. Hey, I'll go pray somewhere else. What, what kind of love is this? How you love him, but you don't want to. You understand? No. We're supposed to treat each other in a loving manner. Force to love. Smile in the face of your brother, brothers. Smile in the face of your sister, sisters. Right? Speak in a good manner to each other. Don't do things that may leave a bad taste in people's mouths. Right? And I mean intentionally. Sometimes things happen and you didn't mean for that to happen because whatever the case is. We're not talking about that. I'm talking about Strive to do things intentionally that will foster love and intentionally avoid those things that will foster hatred. And when you unintentionally hurt someone's feelings, you make sure you intentionally go and apologize to them and explain when that has reached you that your actions have hurt someone else. Go and explain to them. I'm so sorry. I did not intend that. I'm so sorry. I didn't look at you and I, I wasn't you know, any, uh, frowning at you. 
I wasn't frowning at you. I wasn't unhappy to see you. I, I didn't have any, I wasn't grimacing, looking grimacingly at you. No, what happened? My stomach was hurting. My stomach was hurting. I ate something and it hurt my stomach. And when you saw me, that's, you saw the look of pain on my face from my stomach. It wasn't because I saw you. I'm so sorry. Now, this is just an example, but we have to be very mindful at how we treat one another. Very mindful how you treat one another. Because to bring a Muslim joy is a good deed for you. So you have an incentive, of course, be good to your brother. To make your brother or your sister happy, this is a good deed that you brought joy to a Muslim. And it doesn't have to always be by something, you know, big. It can be by something small. It can be because you gave your brother or your sister a piece of your candy bar. It can be because you gave them a piece of gum. It could be something very small, but it's important that we strive to do those things that will increase the brotherhood and increase the sisterhood, and we stay away from those things that will damage the brotherhood and damage the sisterhood. That makes sense? So if you find yourself not liking a Muslim for whatever reason, that's not permissible for you not to like them, Yanni, then don't act upon it. Don't act upon it. That makes sense? Okay. So if you, this is question number three, if you naturally have a dislike for another Muslim, if you naturally have a dislike for another Muslim, are you held accountable for that? Is that a sin upon you? Okay. The next part of that is why? Is it a sin? If you say yes or no, explain why. Explain why. And what is intended by the statement of the Prophet وسلم, don't hate one another. What is intended by that? And what is the narration that was used as a correlation to show what was intended by that? Okay? And all of that are sub- portions of question number three. So again, if you naturally have a dislike for someone, are you held accountable for that? And then I want you to explain, if you say yes, I want you to explain why. If you say no, I want you to explain why. And then I want you to bring the narration that was used to correlate between the concepts that point to the proper meaning of the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, do not hate one another. Do not hate one another. That makes sense? All right. Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he goes on to say, وَلَا تَدَابَرُوا وَلَا تَدَابَرُوا Naam. It is translated as, and do not turn away from one another. Do not turn away from one another. Also, is translated as, do not turn your backs on one another. Do not turn your backs on one another. I think fricatively, turning one, turning the back on one another, we understand. We understand that fricatively. Ma'am, don't turn your backs on one another. But also, practically, don't turn your backs on one another. Meaning physically, practically, don't turn your backs on one another. The Sheikh, he mentions, he says, أَتَدَابَرَ هِيَ الْإِعْرَاضِ That مُدَابَرَ نعم المُدَابَرَ هِيَ الْإِعْرَاضِ It means to avert one's face from another and to give one someone's back. إِعْرَاضُ الْبَعْضِ and الْبَعْضُ الْآخَرِ That some people literally turn away from other people. نعم والذي ينبغي لك أن تستقبل أخاك بالبشر 
والسرور is that what is intended or what is required is that we should face one another with joy and happiness نعم because remember we are prohibited from doing actions that will bring about enmity and hatred and disunity that will foster enmity, hatred and disunity we're prohibited from doing that so if you were to walk into a place now put yourself in the other person's shoes if you were to walk into a room and there were other Muslims that were in close proximity to you and they saw you and as soon as you walked into the room they turned their backs and walked away how would you feel? how would that make you feel? you will feel some type of way you may be angry, may be sad, might be a mixture of the two, hurt your feelings, right? But what are you going to walk away from that thinking? They don't like me. They have a problem with me. Does that help bring us together? Does that help foster love? No, not at all. But it will foster enmity but we should be meeting each other and seeing each other greeting each other facing each other with a smile upon our face not looking at each other suspect not looking at each other like what are you doing here but with a smile upon our face now and whenever you forget just reverse the shoes put yourself in the shoe of someone who turns away from you who turns their back on you who sees you coming and walks away. How would that make you feel? And what would you understand as relates to how that person feels about you? So again, we have to stay away from all of these evil things that will potentially hurt us and hurt our unity. In any event, the Prophet وسلم, he, t he prohibits us from turning our backs on one another. Don't turn your backs on one another. Here's a question. What if you turned your back on someone and it was for good reason? Is that okay? Is there an exception? The Shaykh, he mentions, he says, well, أَمَّا أَن تعرض عنه وتدبر عنه وتوليه ظهرك فهذا يدل على شر that if you were to turn away from them turn your back to them give me your back then this points to something that's bad إلا إذا لم يكن فيه إلا الخير except if that there is in that action nothing but good if, except if it is in that action nothing but good so what can be an example of this where turning away from a Muslim will have in it good when, what kind of case is this and again I want you to understand that these things there's nuances to these things I want you to understand this so if for an example there was an innovator, Naam, or a person of evil, a Muslim who's involved in open, sinful, and evil behavior and activities. You see that person and you turn away, this is fine because it has in it good. And this is because one, you may be fearful of their evil. You might be fearful of something that they're involved in is going to get you and your family caught up. It's going to get you in trouble. So you, so you don't want nothing to do with that. Or it could be a situation that you're turning away from them doesn't cause you or doesn't cause any harm. Yet. It is not, it's not going to result in something that's harmful. So if it is a case that you're turning away from them will result in something harmful, will have a harmful effect, then in that case, you don't turn away. Then in that case, you don't turn away. Like for example, in those places where the people of innovation are strong and have a lot of influence. And if you were to physically turn away from someone, 
then they can take some type of retribution against you, right? Some type of retaliation, get you fired, get you thrown in prison, whatever the case is. Sometimes it happens, yes. People of innovation, they have been known to lie upon the people of the Sunnah and have them falsely imprisoned. They have been known to lie upon the believers and they, they and get them to lose their positions, uh, the, the people of the Sunnah, and get them to lose their positions and so on and so forth. So, yes, it happens. So if you're in this type of situation where you're averting this person, turn away from them, not return their salam, so on and so forth, will result in a greater harm, then, of course, you, then in this case, no, you don't do that. You don't turn away from them. So if you don't fear that it will have any type of bad repercussions or ramifications from from this innovator, right, or from this evil person, then turn away from them. It's okay. It's okay. Also, if by you turning away from them, it will be beneficial to them, that it will cause them to think and to reconsider their lifestyle, right, then, of course, turning away from them is a good thing because it will help them that, look, subhanAllah, they don't even want to talk to me. They don't even want to look at me. They turned their backs on me. Wait a minute. Am I, not, am I really that bad? It might make them rethink. It might help them to come back to their senses, to come back to the truth, to abandon their innovation. So in these cases, then yes, it's good. Turn away from a person. But if this is not as such, there is no good in it. You're just turning away from this person it's because of something that you have within yourself about that person and so on and so forth. Then no, don't do that. Don't do that. And this is what we are being prohibited from. Don't turn away from people. If it's going to make the situation worse, don't turn away from them. Is it going to, if it's going to hurt the community, if it's going to hurt the, the Muslims, don't turn away from them. Don't turn away from them. So with this one, before getting into number five, number four is connected to the previous section. And that is, what are some ways that an individual can avoid being sinful when they have a natural hatred for another Muslim? I'm going to say that again. What are some ways that an individual can avoid being sinful when they have a natural hatred for some Muslims? So I want you to list that. Number five is, can you turn away from an innovator? Can you turn away from an innovator? And what are some scenarios or what are some factors that will allow you to turn away from an innovator? It's a part of number five, Bithinahi Ta'ana. Okay? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam goes on and he says, وَلَا يَبِعْ بَعْضُكُمْ عَلَى بَيْءِ بَعْضُ and don't undercut one another in business. Don't undercut one another. Naam. The Shaykh he mentions, he says, وَهَذَا مِثِلْ مَا مَرَّ فِي النَّجْ He said, this is similar to what had already come in Najj. أَنَّهُ إِسَاءَةٌ فِي الْمُعَامَلَةِ Is that it is to act in an evil and a bad manner as relates to mutual dealings and in, in actions. فَإِذَا بَاعَ أَخُوكَ سِلْعَةً فَلَا تَذْهَبْ إِلَى الْمُشْتَرِي وَتَقُولْ أَنْتَ مَغْبُونَ He says, so for example, if your brother has sold a patron an item, don't go to that patron, don't go to the person who has bought it and say, man, you got ripped off. You got ripped off. أَنَا عِنْدِي لَكَ أَرْخَصْ مِنْهَا He said, I got cheaper than that. Let me see what you got. I got I got the same thing. It's cheaper. Well, أحسن منها. And mine is better. Now, so why, why are they saying that? Man, take that back. Return it to him. Come over here to my store. Buy it from me. This is going to cause hatred, right? Be like Shekhu, be like Rehim. Between who? Between you and the other seller. Now, both merchants now are going to have a problem with each other. So do not undercut one another in business. Do not undercut one another. Ana kulli hal, the Sheikh he was on, he mentioned, he says, فَتَدْخُلُ عَلَيْهِ الْحُزْن He said, you're going to make this person feel sad. Right? The person going to feel sad. The other merchant, he's going to feel sad. 
وربما تفسد المعاملة بينهما and you may actually ruin the business between both of them. Perhaps it was an ongoing thing, it was a business deal, whatever the case is. You may, they, they, they may break up that business deal, break up that partnership, whatever the case is. They may say, oh, listen, you were getting over on me in prices, so on and so forth. Nah, forget that. I don't want to do business with you no more. So you may take, a, you may take that person's customer permanently. That's going to have negative financial ramifications upon that, upon that brother, upon that sister. And you wouldn't want anyone to do that to you, so don't do it to anyone else. Right? Especially if everything was above board, no one was trying to get over it, and anyone, and so on and so forth. Now, then now, I mean, you don't want to um, do, any, do, do the likes of these things. Because a person could sell something at a fair market rate, right? But at a profit margin of whatever the case is. And then now you come and you sell it and you lower your profit margin. So they got, you know, 20%, 50%, whatever percent profit. And you say, well, that's fine. I'll take, you know, 15%. So now you sell it. So yeah, you sell it cheaper, but because you, you get less profit, but making it seem like oh look they're so unre they're so unreasonable. No, they're not unreasonable. It's okay. Adequately had. Don't do these things because it will. It will ruin. Partnerships. It it will ruin business amongst people. You're gonna make people sad. Now, you're gonna make people sad. What's okay, Obeyna Huma, and Nizar, and you're gonna be the cause of them arguing. They're going to be the cause of them arguing. And it might be a situation for yatlubu and iqala. It might be a situation where the person may try to get the other one fired. Listen, I was informed that your employee got over on me and did this and did that. I want him fired and so on and so forth. Now you have a, 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 a bad result as relates to that person's employment. So now how would that result? Think about it. If someone got you fired from your job, would you think, oh, that's my best friend, that's my brother, the next time I see him, I'm going to give him a present? No. You're going to have hatred for that person. You're going to cause hatred and enmity for people. This man got me fired. This one got me fired because he lied on me, and this one came and he listened to that lie, and, and, and he raised the, he rose the complaint, and now they got me fired. Now I hate both of them. It's going to cause problems. So doing these things is haram. Because that's what? That's being trifling. What are you doing that for? Nobody was bothering you. He just bought the thing from him. He didn't buy it from you. So are you being trifling and now going to do some things and try to get the man fired or to steal his sale? This is not This is not good. This is not good. And especially, the Shaykh, he mentions, خصوصاً إذا كان البيع عن فيه خيار. Especially if it was a transaction that had a grace period wherein the item could be returned in exchange and getting the person get their money back. Now, if it's one of those type of things, and especially in this situation, you don't go to someone and say, oh man, I'll give it to you cheaper. Go take that back and come with me. No, this is not permissible because it's going to cause enmity. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says that it comes in the hadith, hadith Jabir, fi ma rawahu Muslim, fi sahihi, fi hadith Jabir, radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, um, as it comes in Muslim, collecting in Muslim, with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, nas min He said, leave the people alone. Allah Ta'ala will provide from them for them from them. Now, leave the people alone. Allah Ta'ala, he will provide for the people from the people. That, you know what I mean? And they would do business with one another. So let, let, leave alone. Let, let, let that process take its course. Leave it. Don't, don't get involved. The Shaykh he mentioned, he says, وَكَذَلِكَ أَشْرَاءُ عَلَى شَرَاءِ He said, likewise, even undercutting someone as relates to a purchase, because you, you can undercut someone as relates to their business transaction, and you can also undercut someone as relates to a purchase. بِأَنْ يَشْتَرِي سِلْعَةً For example, a person, they buy an item. وَسَرَى أَنَّهَا طَيِّبٌ وَرَخِيصًا And they see it themselves, and this is good, and this is cheap. نعم. But what? trying to get over but then they go to the one who sold it what and they say unto him say so, man you they got over on you in this sale right say so, yo they got over on you in this sale but it's a type of bear it's a type of transaction that it has in it what it has a time frame. Now, 
بأكثر مما اشتراها منك فلان. They said, man, look, you go like you go to the person who who sold it, and you and you know you see somebody got a good deal on something. He said, man, that's a good deal. That was nice. So now you go to the person who sold it, and you said, man, they got over on you. That merchant, that person, or that 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 that, that um, what do you call it? That uh, patron, whatever. He he got over on you. You sold it for that price. Yo, go get it back from him. Tear up that deal. I buy it for more. I buy it for more. This is going to cause enmity and hatred amongst the people. So this um this affair, blaya Jews, it's not permissible because it's going to bring about enmity, hatred. You're going to infringe upon the rights of another Muslim. So it's not permissible. So it's not permissible. Now, so with this, I want you to give me an example of undercutting someone in business. Give me an example of undercutting someone in business. Number seven is I want you to give me an example of undercutting someone as relates to a purchase. Okay. Number eight, these things in this hadith, they are prohibited. What is the underlying reason why they are prohibited? I mentioned it a number of times already. What is the underlying reason that they are prohibited? That makes sense? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he ends off this portion of the hadith and bithilahi ta'ala from here is where we can start in the next session, bithilahi ta'ala. And that is the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and be you, O servants of Allah, brothers. Have true brotherhood and true sisterhood amongst each other. Because إِخْوَى Because verily, the believers, then they are nothing but brothers one to another, sisters one to another. Because true brotherhood is built upon Iman. Naam. True brotherhood is built upon Iman. So inshallah ta'ala, this is where we will pick up from in our next session. Bithnilahi ta'ala. But the overwhelming takeaway is where we left off and where we will start Bithnilahi ta'ala in the next class, and that is. O oh, believers, be you brothers one to another. Be you brothers one to another. And as, and as particular for the sisters, as this is a sister's class. O oh, sisters, be you sisters one to another. نكتفي بهذا القدر وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وجزاكم الله خيرا إلا اللقاء until next time we meet استودعكم الله والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته